they did that with Nikisha Sales on the floor for Connecticut. They upset them. And then in the Big East Championship with Connecticut without its two-time All-American, they end up losing it. And UConn did not lose to another Big East opponent until Saturday at Boston College. We mentioned at the top of the telecast, in the last six seasons, including the current one, UConn has played exactly 100 Big East regular season games and has won 96 of them. Mm. You get exactly a sense. I mean, there's been some criticism as this is a one-team league up until this year, probably late last year with Notre Dame. But that has all changed with Rutgers and D.C. This is Averleach for three. On the rebound, Stewart runs it down in the corner. So now Rutgers up seven with the ball, seven minutes into the second half. This is a UConn team that averages 96 points per game and has scored only 32 in the first 27 minutes. Young with the pull-up. Boy, she forced that one. Here's Glenny. It's a three-on-one if they hurry. Glenny feeds Williams, who is hammered by Cunningham. Her second foul and a smart foul to prevent the easy layup. We talk about the injuries. You just see Marcy Glenny running transition, an excellent pass. If you add the 39 points per game that they've lost by virtue of their injuries, they would be up around the margin where they would be. You know, Ariyama yesterday was talking about the rivalry with Rutgers. He said, we proved last year in the Big East tournament that it's not going to be easy to move us out of the position we worked so hard to reach. <laughs> Trying Sour. to send a message? Yeah. Sauer coming back in. It took a long time for them to establish this program. Let's remember exactly how far down Connecticut was when he took over. They've been to the final eight or beyond six times in the last eight years. And you know, this Rutgers program went to the NCAA tournament last year after a three-year absence. But before that three-year absence, they went to the tournament nine straight times. Well, it's a great tradition here. Sue Wicks, one of the outstanding players. Teresa Grant leading them through that early successful period. Grant, of course, later coached our Olympic team. Wicks, number 23, was retired this season. Pointer missing the shot, rebound Glenny. And she is fouled. I think it's going to be Bonin. And that's number three on Bonin. This could be a battle of attrition. We are at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey. So glad you could join us for the big showdown in the Big East. I'm Bob Picosi along with Doris Burke. We have 12.20 to go. And Rutgers in first place in the Big East leads second place UConn 39-34. Dave Sauer cross court to Aberleach and threw it over her head and out of bounds. Well, that time working against a 1-3-1 zone. And the turnovers that Connecticut is committing, as tough as Rutgers defense can be, they're not and haven't been by virtue of the pressure. Gino's club has just collapsed at times mentally 22 turnovers pointer defended by Glenn gets the high screen from Bonin now kicks out to Bonin this is Gilmore wide open look back rims it rebound Williams foul Gilmore a lot of touch fouls outside the players have got to adjust. Gilmore was on the bench a while. She's watched how the officials have called the game. Second on Gilmore, six on the club. Danny Duran in your picture. Sue Bird in the gray shirt. Freshman point guard at a Christ the King High School. Well, I asked you right at the end of the half, guards, whether you thought Gina Oriana would give Kirsten Walters another look here in the second half. So far, he has not. Mm. Walters played just six minutes tonight. He had no points, no assists for 25 minutes at Boston College that day. And the first six minutes today, 0 for 1 from the floor, no assists. This is Aberleach, shot clock at 10 on the left, Lenny for three. Got it! 
Well, she missed a couple, and you gotta love to see her. The bench loves to see it. And despite missing a couple, not shy. And that First three-pointer of the night for the Huskies. Five points for Glenning. And all of a sudden, that seven-point lead is cut to two at the 11-minute mark. Down low, Sutton Brown spins, lays it in with the left. Man, if she played 40 minutes of basketball like that, Vivian Trainer would be a very happy woman. Abrasimova over the other way. The shot is blocked and a held ball. Possession arrow record. So we have a timeout with 10.47 to go on this one. Marcy Glenny with a three has pulled UConn within four. Rutgers leading UConn by four. The 1999 Big East Women's Basketball Championship will also be held here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. It begins Saturday, February 8th, runs through Tuesday, March the 2nd. For tickets, call 732-445-2766. Rutgers, the host for the second consecutive year, and the tournament next season is returning to the University of Connecticut. And will be there for the next two years. Rutgers 9-0 in the Big East. Best Big East start ever, only the fourth year in the league. UConn is 9-1. So that's why this game is so important. If Rutgers wins, they move two games ahead of UConn in the loss column. And even should the Huskies catch Rutgers, Rutgers would win any tiebreaker because they would have won the one and only meeting between the two. Down low, Sutton Brown gives to Cunningham, who puts it on the floor, has the shot partially blocked, and Brown is fouled by Glenny. Well, Brown has started to take over this basketball game, and I've talked about her inconsistency. With the body that she has at 6'4", she should be able to dominate. The miss by Cunningham that ever-present Sandy Sutton Brown here in the second half. Outstanding job getting to the glass. Foul on Glenny, her third, so Brown will go to the line. You know, Brown has the best field goal shooting percentage in the country. She's not listed in the statistics because she doesn't have enough field goals made, but on the year, Tammy Sutton Brown has hit a remarkable He's, he's hesitating. 71.6%. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a misprint. I know. He's checking his numbers. No question. I didn't shoot that layup line. 71.6%. <laughs> and she's, she's been hampered. Uh, she's had a stress fracture. And, uh, Vivian's kept her out of practice as much as she possibly can. So her timing and rhythm a little bit affected Vivian trying to save her for the game. She had 17 rebounds against Georgetown this year as did Tamika Williams when UConn played the head. This is Tamika Williams with the ball. Double. Averly, shot clock inside 10. Rutgers extending the defense. Clock winding down. Lenny beats Sauer as it's taken away by Stewart. Magnificent defense. That 3-2 so tough. Over number 23 for the Huskies. Going to get Abraleach for a hold outside on Stewart. Number one on Tiana. And that's four on the Huskies this half. Abraleach, a junior college All-American at Central Florida Community College. This is her second and final year in the UConn program. Started four games earlier. With the quality scores on this Rutgers flowing. Pointer can put some numbers up. Stewart to Moore Young. Oh. Wow. Stewart with a wild shot. She's got 17 for this half. And the lead is six as we approach the nine-minute mark. You don't always get great offensive players to buy into a defensive system, but Vivian Stringer has sold these kids on it. She's plenty. And Abrelich is stripped, but Pointer will be called for her foul, uh, fourth foul. Oh, my. This is a club that knows in order to win championships, you've got to play defense, and they try to step it up here. Just a little step in by Pointer, but obviously got a piece. 
That also puts Rutgers over the limit, so UConn will go to the line, and Pointer will go to the bench. So Tiana Aberleach at the free throw line. She's been there just twice this year, one of two. Can't get it to go. Rebound last touch by Rutgers. So UConn ball in the fourth court with a new clock. Dower sits down, gets another rest. Williams has her shot blocked out of bounds. UConn ball again with 27 left in the shot clock. And Rutgers a little slow to set what they wanted there. That was an opportunity for Connecticut to get a quick score. Abrasimova wide open. Can't do that. No. I don't care how bad Svet shooting. And you let her have that kind of look and she'll drain it. So the first three-pointer in the last two games for the sophomore from St. Petersburg, Russia, the preseason selection for Big East Player of the Year, has nine points and has a steal. Can Cunningham catch her? Uh-uh. She's a great anticipator. Smith plays both ends of the floor. And she loves to step in passing lanes. She'll face you into throwing the pass. Well, UConn down six a moment ago, suddenly within one. Rossimova leads the conference in steals. Sutton Brown, defended by Jones. Shot clock winding down. Gilmore over Glenny. Wow. Got the roll. That's a nice tough shot by her, but perfect defensive position by Glenny. You couldn't ask for better defense. Force him into a tough shot, and Gilmore just drains it. Well, here comes Kirsten Walters, so she will get another opportunity. Can't play much better defense than Glennie did here, huh? Uh, you want to keep the ball handler, you want to keep yourself between the ball handler and the bucket, and Glennie does, and Gilmore is just a solid athlete and a capable shooter. She's really come around. Walters, 5'8", freshman from Littleton, Colorado, now getting a, a second opportunity to run the show from the point. Jones, wild shot off balance. I like that, that's sweet. <laughs> He's got a lot of 6'2 kids who can handle the ball and float in the air. Jones, after a tough night, big shot. Jones was the Big East Rookie of the Week earlier this season. Making his seventh collegiate start. The club down one. Stewart over Jones, who made it tough. Abrasimova on the rebound. Let's see what she does in transition. Finds Jones on the floor. Shot. And the foul on Sutton Brown, her fourth foul. Well, how about this for a response? You come home and you play just about as bad a half as you can. And Asia Jones, she's had two consecutive hoops, this one with a body on her, both tough shots. Girl can play. Goes right around Sutton Brown and with 6'5 and a hefty frame on her, sticks it anyway. So now with 7.16 to go, Gets a little love for teammates. They appreciate it. Three Rutgers starters, Linda Miles, Tasha Pointer, and Tammy Sutton Brown, all with four personal fouls. At what point do you bring Pointer back in? Well, you certainly, now that you've lost the lead, I think you've got to consider it. Only seven minutes, 16 seconds on the clock. Just before we went to the half, we said she's their organizer, their energizer. I don't think they'll stay without her much longer. Now, if you're Gino Oriema, do you try to get the ball down low to Paige Sauer when she returns and try to get Sutton Brown out of there? Well, I think you've got to look at it. Spread the floor because Sutton Brown has hurt you all this half, so it's a good thought. But for the moment, UConn with a smaller, quicker lineup and a lineup which has given the Huskies a one-point lead, their first lead since they led 24-23. But Jones misses the free throw. She's got six points and five rebounds. So as we approach the seven-minute mark, it's UConn by one. What a battle this has been between these two kingpins in the Big East. And Stewart gives up her dribble and has to use a timeout to avoid a held ball call. Well, but you just said, when will you get Natasha Pointer back in? And that a situation where... The ball is not in the hands of your point guard who is...